Armor was over three inches at the front of the vehicle. Side plates around the turret and running gear were also added on later models. In Russia, the crews of the Panzer IVs and III's captured hundreds of thousands of prisoners during the first year of the campaign. These tanks led the advances on Moscow, Leningrad, and Stalingrad, and held back the Soviets after the German defeat at Kursk in 1943. The rugged and versatile Panzer IV was never entirely surpassed by the more advanced Panther tanks. The Germans captured large numbers of the standard Soviet 76 mm field gun. This could fire armor-piercing rounds and was widely used by the Germans in anti-tank warfare. The Russians also made good use of captured enemy equipment. They used German Panzer IVs and other vehicles to supplement their own armored forces. While Germany was gearing up for war, the Japanese also had been experimenting with armored fighting vehicles. Although primarily an infantry force, the Imperial Japanese Army had several light and medium tanks of its own. The Type 95 Hago was the most common Japanese tank. It was developed by Mitsubishi in 1933 to replace the older and slower Type 89 infantry tank. In particular, gasoline engines had shown a tendency to catch fire, and one of the requirements for the new vehicle was a diesel engine. The first prototype was finished in 1934, and the first models went into production the following year. Their designation, 95, refers to the year 2595 in the Japanese calendar. About 1,300 Hagos were built. They served with the Japanese infantry and cavalry from 1937 on and saw action in China and in the Pacific. By the time the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, the 7-ton Type 95 was already obsolete. It fought on throughout the war, along with the heavier 15-ton Type 97 medium tank. Although reliable, both tanks were outclassed by Allied armor, especially the American Sherman tank. The Hago was very reliable, and it had a top speed of nearly 30 miles per hour. In fact, speed and reliability were its best features. It could climb an obstacle almost three feet high or cross a ditch over six feet wide. The rugged bell crank suspension and air-cooled engine were well suited to Asian terrain, and the tank was highly maneuverable. Although speed in later models was as high as 31 miles an hour, quickness alone was not enough to win the battle. The Hago was designed to fight the Chinese, not the modern armies of America and her allies. The Type 95 saw its most important service outside of China in the Philippines and during the campaign in Malaya in 1941 through 42. Accompanied by truckloads of infantry, Hagos helped bring about Japanese victory, mainly because the British had no tanks of their own. But because of its thin armor, it was vulnerable even to the British two-pounder anti-tank gun. The bigger Type 97 Chiha medium tank had more armor, a crew of five, and a high-velocity 47-millimeter gun, which was a great improvement over the Hago. When the Japanese came up against the Sherman tank, they upgraded the Chiha with a 75-millimeter gun, but it was too late. By that time, superior Allied forces were beginning to prevail. Japanese armor, wasted as static defense in much of the Pacific, was never more than incidentally important, except in the war in China. The Italian army was still made up largely of infantry, cavalry, and horse-drawn artillery when Benito Mussolini decided to invade Ethiopia in 1934. Italy was the second of the Axis powers to use armored fighting vehicles in combat and the ill-equipped Ethiopian army was virtually helpless against the invading tanks and their supporting aircraft. But the Italian armored troops were less successful against modern opponents in the Spanish Civil War in Greece and North Africa.
Italy's most widely used fighting vehicles were the little CV-29 tankettes and the vehicles derived from them. These were all based on the British Cardin Lloyd tankettes, which the Italians bought in 1929 and then started building on their own. The Caro Valace 29, or fast tank, was a small open vehicle which carried a crew of two and was armed with a single machine gun. The transmission was similar to that of a Vickers light tank and was based on a Cardin Lloyd design. It had two pairs of sprung three-wheel bogey assemblies, one unsprung bogey and return idler at the rear, and a front drive sprocket. The Italian firm Ansaldo only built 25 CV-29s before switching to the improved CV-33 version. This had a roof to protect the crew from shell fragments and grenades. Even though only a few CV-29s were built, they were important test vehicles for later models. The little CV-29s had excellent cross-country mobility. They could also tow artillery pieces, giving the division gunners a fighting chance at keeping up with the faster tanks. The later model CV-33 and CV-35, with roofs to protect the crew, were also used to test a variety of gun mounts. The plan had been to give the tanks 20 or 47 millimeter guns, but this idea was eventually abandoned, although the mount was modified for a flame gun. The designations changed to L333 and L335. This stood for Leggero, or light three-ton model 1933 and model 1935. On both tanks, the crew positions were the same, with the driver on the right side and the gunner on the left. All L3 tanks were amazingly maneuverable. They could climb obstacles over two feet high and cross a trench nearly five feet wide. Barbed wire presented no problems. The L3 could smash its way through wire fences or entanglements, clearing a path for the infantry following behind it. A specialized unarmed engineer and recovery version was also developed, as well as a bridge-laying tank. This version towed a 23-foot bridge in sections on a trailer. The tank crew had to dismount in order to assemble the four bridge sections for crossing a river or stream, but this took only about 10 minutes. A total of about 2,400 L3s were built, the largest number of any Italian tank model. But even by the standards of 1940, they were hopelessly outclassed by bigger and more heavily armed vehicles. The later model CV-333 and CV-335s had a top speed close to 26 miles per hour and a range of 75 miles. The CV-29's welded construction gave way to riveted armor, and the average weight was three and a half tons. L3s could ford rivers over two feet deep, but no attempts were made to develop an amphibious version of the tanks. Their fording ability came in handy during the campaigns in the Balkans and in Russia, where Italian troops fought on the southern front. L-335s also served in the desert campaign in North Africa, where many of them carried twin machine guns. Command tanks also carried a large looped radio antenna on the left side in the rear. CV-33 and various other L-3 tanks remained in service with the Italian army until Italy's surrender in 1943. Despite the limitations of their size and armament, the Germans continued to use L3s in the fight against the partisans until the end of the war in 1945. Realizing the shortcomings of the L3 tanks, Ansaldo began working in 1938 to develop a new tank to replace them. The Italian government showed little official interest, so the tank's development was slow. It was supposed to be part of the five-ton class, but the final version ended up weighing over six. The tank entered service in 1940, and so was given the designation L640. It was a big, boxy vehicle, and only carried a crew